They always say insurance is something you don't want to pay for until you need it. Hey you guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. First of all, we have a guest over here who will most likely either be taking a nap or giving herself a bath for the duration of this video. One of the very first things that happened around here to kick off 2019 was a fire. If you're new to my channel and have no idea what I'm talking about, it looked like this, and I will link the video of the entire story up above in the cards. Since sharing this information with you, I've been getting a lot of messages saying, hey, are we gonna get an update? What is happening? What's happening to your house? And I wanna start off by saying two things. One, thank you so much for all of the nice messages. I feel like I'm always thanking you for messages, but I always want you to know that they do not go unnoticed. I read all of them. That video that I just shared in the cards just had so much love and support and even some legal advice thrown in there because while I have car and I do have home insurance, there's a lot of different kinds of home and car insurance as you're going to see in this video. And the second thing I want to address is this video is not bashing insurance at all. all. Even though this insurance situation is one in which they are covering zero, zilch, nada, I do not want you to take this video as Kristen says we shouldn't have insurance. This is simply what has happened in my situation and if it helps even one person go and check their policy and make any changes then it has clearly done its job. But no, this video is not bashing any insurance and this is not me saying to get rid of any insurance that you have. Keep your home insurance, keep your car insurance, but if any of these terms I'm about to say sound foreign to you, go check your policies and make sure you have the things that I may or may not have had. That being said, if you have anything similar to the story that I'm about to share, please let me know down below in the comment section. I love having discussions with you guys down there and it's just always interesting to see what you guys have been through and the kind of advice you have for not just me, but other people who watch this channel. And speaking of watching this channel, if you have not yet done so, make sure to click the little subscription button down below and the bell to be notified for each and every future video. Rewind back exactly eight weeks from right now. It was mid-January, it was a discussion disgusting Saturday night. It was just like sleeting, like half rain, half ice. It was just awful outside. Get a knock on the door around 9.30 p.m. It's my city's police department. There has been a fire in my condominium's home port. Four carports. Ironically, four out of the over 100 units in this complex, four are affected by this fire. At that point, they hadn't figured out and determined the cause of the fire. They just came, took an incident with myself and my three other neighbors as to what happened, what possessions were destroyed, damaged, and basically gone, and they said to get back to us within a few days. We were also advised to contact our car insurance if our cars were involved, and our home insurance if we were storing personal possessions in the storage port of the car unit. So police report is filed and just a few days later I contacted my insurance company, let them know this happened and they said they wanted to wait until they got an official police report that would determine the cause of the fire. Of course all insurances want the reports so they know who to go to in the event anybody owes you something in a claim. Pretty standard so far. Finally, we wait a few days and the police report is posted online. The police report stated fire did begin in the trash receptacles of the carport. The downside of this police report is that the cause of the fire was unknown. Meaning, even though it started in a common area on the property of the condominium, the condominium is not at fault because the cause was unknown. Had the cause stated that the fire began in the trash receptacles on the public property of the condo complex, which destroyed four carports, it would then have been determined the claim would go to the condominium, meaning they would be the ones financially responsible for replacing or repairing the lost or damaged items. But sadly, it did not go this way. Because the police report did state unknown, it was not the condo's responsibility to replace any of these things. Again, I'm just going off of the information stated to me and my neighbors. Both of our insurances said the exact same thing. Let's address a few things in the carport, shall we? Number one, the car. Of course, always, please, please always have car insurance. But if you do not know if your car insurance includes gap insurance, here is why you should have it. This may sound like an insurance sponsored video, but I assure you it is not. I'm not naming any companies. Use the one that works for you. 
but here's why gap insurance is very important. The car insurance company did come out, they assessed the damage of the car, which let me just tell you, it was gone. The windows had busted through from the heat, half the car was melted. It just looked like a really weird science experiment if I'm being really honest. But anyway, within 10 days, there was a replacement car with very few financial woes. The car insurance company did provide a rental for the time that the destroyed car was being removed from the port and the new car was there to be purchased. I will say the biggest pain in this situation, other than being without your vehicle for a day or two, is all the paperwork that it takes to finish a loan of one car and open a loan of another car within a three month period. But either way, car insurance was great and the gap insurance, gap insurance covers you from the assessment of the destroyed or damaged car all the way through the receiving of the new one. If you don't have it, get it. But now it gets even more fun. Let's talk about the possessions in the carport. Above where the car is parked was a storage unit and inside that storage unit I had my patio cushions, my patio furniture umbrella, grill, kitten carrier for trips to the vet, and musical instruments as well as a few just things I kept in for storage like holiday decorations, probably a few other things I can't even think of they were gone. In my insurance claim, I did calculate the amount of things that I had lost in this fire and it came out to right around $1,100. Now here's how my personal home insurance policy works. I have the deductible of $500 before insurance kicks in to pay the rest. Meaning, if I have damages of $1,000, I pay the first 500 and insurance pays the remaining. That's not a big, big issue. It would be like if my entire home burnt down, I would pay 500 and they would pay the several hundred thousand to replace the entire unit. Thank goodness it didn't go this way, but when I did submit this claim, I got a call from my insurance. They said, hey Kristen, we wanna let you know a few things. We can't accept this claim of $1,100 and here is why. The big one out of everything they listed was musical instruments. I was not aware of this and I have surely learned now that musical instruments need their own insurance policy. This probably won't affect many people, but if you're someone who has a $10,000 baby grand piano, P.S. I don't. Mine were mainly the instruments I used for school in their cases. Granted, a brand new clarinet is $700, trombone more, trumpet even more, so on and so forth, but mine were used, so they weren't like brand new. But my claim with the instruments was $1,100, and without it, it came out to right around $615. Now, I could have gone in and paid my $500 and had them cut me a check for $115, but that would technically be a claim opened, which would likely mean that all future home insurance monthly payments would go up because I opened a claim. And my insurance representative was really nice about it. He said, Kristen, we could pay this 115, but just trust me when I say, do not finish this claim. Your rates will go up every month for a $115 claim. Wait until you have something more catastrophic where it will make more sense for you to open a claim and get a check. And he's absolutely right. I don't know how much it would have gone up. I don't know how you can calculate, you know, one claim for how much money. I don't know if that is actually a formula that you could use. Let me know down below if you know. Either way, at the beginning, it was $1,100. When I realized I couldn't claim my musical instruments because those had to be on their own private insurances, it bumped me down from 1100 to just over 600 and I already had to pay the $500 deductible, meaning that they would have cut me a check for just over $100 and most likely upped my monthly payments for my home insurance. That is my long-winded story of how insurance is not going to pay for any of this carport repair. Once again, this is not me saying don't have home insurance or don't have car insurance. Please have them both. If this fire had happened here in my condo, you can rest assured that I would have opened a claim and paid my $500 deductible and told the insurance company to cover the rest. Can I take a nap? Can I nap? We don't have a vet carrier anymore. How are you going to go to the vet? You look very upset. Yep, here's how upset you are to not go to the vet. My moral of the story and silver lining is just to remind you to have your insurance and know your policy. Again, if you don't know if you have gap insurance, check, and if you don't, 
get it. It is well worth it. Anyway, let me know if you have any similar stories down below in the comment section. I usually hang out in my comments about an hour to two after the video goes live, and I would love to hear what you guys have to say. Anyway, that is it for this video. Once again, make sure you are subscribed down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you're all about that insurance when you need it. And I will see you guys in next Tuesday's video. Side note, it's 11 weeks till summer vacation. Not that anymore.